Hello everyone, welcome back. You are now up to lesson five. So you're getting through this. Keep going, you're doing good. I know it can be a little boring with this early stuff, but it's important to learn the basics, especially if you're new to SolidWorks, you need to learn those basics. It'll make your 3D modeling so much better in the end. So just stick with these early couple of chapters. And as we get into more advanced stuff, it'll become a lot more interesting and much more fun. Anyway, the next thing we have to learn about is one of the sketch entities again, and this time it is for circles and arcs. So we just learnt about rectangles in a previous lesson. Now it's time for circles and arcs. In this case, we are going to use circles and arcs to recreate this sketch I have here. So if you're following along, first create a sketch. You should have learned that in a previous lesson. Uh, so create a sketch and then create two center lines as I have on the side here. And to make it a little easier, I actually fixed these points with a uh, fixed constraint. So I put one here and on the outside edges. That just makes sure that it's not going to move around when we're drawing these entities. So there are two things to look at here. First, there are circles and then there are arcs. Circles can be done in two ways. There's a center point circle and then there is a perimeter circle. Arcs can be done in three ways. There is the center arc, the tangent arc, and the three point arc. So we're going to use all types of circles and arcs to recreate this sketch. First things first, we need to actually know how to create a circle or arc. And this can be done a few ways in SolidWorks. First, you could go to the tools and then to sketch entities. And in here, you'll find all your circles, circle here, perimeter circle, and also your arcs, center point, tangent, three point arc. Another way is to use the command manager, which is this area, making sure the sketch tab is activated and you'll see circle. And it defaults to circle, but if you want the perimeter circle, you just click on the little arrow and you'll see perimeter circle. Another way is to right click in a blank space in the graphics window and going down to sketch entities. And here you'll also see two circle types and the three arcs. And finally, my preferred way is just by pushing S on the keyboard, S for shortcut, which brings up the shortcut menu. And similar to the command manager, uh, you can just see this default circle or clicking on the triangle to drop it down to select perimeter and also the arcs and again, clicking on that to see the other expanded options. Let's begin by starting with the basic circle. So we're going to use my preferred method. We're going to push S on the keyboard and clicking on the circle tool. And what we want to do is create this large circle in the middle. The way the default circle tool works is by picking the center point and then you just drag it out to pick a diameter basically. It's also worth mentioning that there are some additional options here when you start the command. So you could have uh, diameter dimensions or add dimensions or you can actually still change to a perimeter circle if you selected the wrong one. So you don't have to cancel the command and then start perimeter, you could just click on perimeter and do a perimeter circle from here or a normal circle from here. And the same thing goes for the arcs as well. So we want a default circle. We are going to click on the center point, making sure that center becomes highlighted, clicking on that. And then we're just going to drag out until it locks into that position there and snaps to the end point and clicking on that. So that's how you do a standard center point circle. Now we're going to use the perimeter circle to create this uh, circle kind of in the middle outside. By making sure our perimeter circle is activated, we'll click on the center point and then we're going to drag over, lock into this outside edge. And then it's not snapping onto this center line. So we're just going to place it about here. And we want it to actually be coincident to that line. So what you can do, uh, finish that command, grab this point and drag it around until it wants to snap onto there. And that's how you can do that. A quick pro tip here, you can actually set the dimension of a circle in one step. So you don't have to actually create the circle and then use the dimension tool to size it. You can do it in one step and I'll show you how. So we'll create a circle. We're going to just pick a random center point, start dragging it out, and you can see it has a little measurement box sitting there already. So you can just, without doing anything else, just type in a measurement, say 40 millimeters, and it's going to create the dimension and size it to 40 mils for you. So that's a really quick tip. Otherwise, you will get into the habit of, say, drawing the circle and then escaping and then giving it a dimension, setting that to 40, 
dragging that over. It didn't work, so I need to put in 40 again. So you can see it's much more quicker to just start the circle and then give it a size. It doesn't work in every case, like you don't always need to do it, but it is very handy when you can generally just do that on the fly in most cases. So anyway, we're going to delete those because we don't need them. And the next thing we're going to look at is the arc. So you got the center arc, the tangent arc and the three point arc. First one we will look at is of course the center arc and we're going to use that to draw this inside line. Using S on the keyboard, which is my way of doing things, I'm going to pick the center point arc. What you need to do here is pick the center point and then two outside points. So we're going to, it's actually, it's not the center point here, it's actually here. So it needs to be here. That's the center point of this arc. We click here. And then we're going to use this corner and we drag it down. If you drag the other way, it's going to start drawing it in that direction, but we actually want it on the inside. So you need to bring it back, make sure it's drawing on the inside and then bring it down to this point and we're done. Uh, instead of always clicking on the close dialog box button, you can actually just push escape on the keyboard. That's another way of doing it. Now we will use the tangent arc to create this outside arc. So we're going to go to our shortcut menu, drop that down, go to tangent arc. And with this arc, you just pick two points and then sort of drag it out to the size you want. So we're gonna click on this and then go down to here and, ah, you'll notice that it doesn't look like it does on the outside edge. And that is because with the tangent arc, it's going to usually default to a particular arc it's looking at. So the, what I mean here is that we have two arcs that it could actually work from and it's actually trying to draw this arc from the outside one. So it's thinking it just needs to complete a circle like this. So what you need to do is actually bring your mouse over to this line here so the end point gets highlighted and then quickly drag to the end point and click on it and then drag out. So what you do quickly hover over here, quickly go over, pick that point, drag it out, and this is the painful thing about this tangent arc when you've got competing um, edges it wants to work with. So we're going to try that again. Going to bring it to there. And it still doesn't want to do it. We'll give it one more try. Start a bit further out. Okay, so that time will work. So you can be, see it's a little annoying sometimes. With tangent arcs, there's one more way you can do it. And it's to do with something that's called auto transition. What I mean is you can actually draw an arc from a straight line and it will automatically transition to an arc from a, strand, from a straight line and then back to a straight line again. What you do in this case, if I draw a straight line and drop a point there and it wants to draw another straight line, but if I go back to that point without clicking anything and then just bring the mouse out again, you'll notice it actually wants to draw an arc. And then if I click, and then it goes back to straight line and I click and then I can, it wants to draw another straight line, but I drag it back to that point and then drag it out. And so that's another way of drawing a tangent arc. So let's use that here. So if I delete that, I can actually use my line tool. Having this highlighted, quickly go to the end and you'll see it's trying to draw an arc. I drag it back and then out. And there we go. And I'll just delete this because I don't need it. So that's another way you can draw a tangent arc. And it's quite smooth flowing when you're drawing something and you can do a line and then draw an arc and then do another line and an arc out. So it makes things really quick rather than having to switch between multiple tools. So that's a, a good pro tip to know that. Final one we need to look at is of course the three point arc, which is what we're going to use to draw this final arc on the outside here. Going to our shortcut menu, dropping that down, going to three point arc and we need to pick three points. So we're going to pick this corner this corner and then just drag it out to about here. And you'll notice it doesn't want to actually snap to anything else. So I'll show you what we can do to make it match the other side. So we're just gonna click there to drop it and we're happy with that, pushing escape. What we want is this arc to be the same as this one. And we can use sketch relations to do that. And if you can remember from the previous episode or from the previous lesson, we can use a equal relation. Picking these two lines, letting the little, little context menu come up, go to make equal and you'll notice it moves out a little bit to match the other side. Shink escape because we're done and there we go. 
we finished. So using arcs and circles is very powerful. It's uh, obviously one of the base sketch entities you need to know. Make sure you practice around a little bit and get familiar with drawing these different types of circles and arcs, and you can move on to the next lesson.